I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. My cross I carry till I see Jesus. My cross I carry till I see Jesus. My cross I carry till I see Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The wall behind me, the cross before me, the wall behind me, the cross before me, the wall behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. I want to welcome us once again today into our Open Heaven series for today the 27th day of January 2020, today Monday the 27th day of January 2020. The topic of our discussion today is the word or the world? The world or the world is a question. But before then, let us pray. Let's commit our discussion into the hands of God before we continue the examination of this title. Eternal Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name for the pleasant night. We thank you for the glorious day. We glorify your name. For what you did yesterday, for what you taught us yesterday. We are hoping for the best today. Father, please help us to answer this question positively. That we go for the word and not for the world in the mighty name of Jesus. Because we know the word has nothing good to offer us. But the word is life. Help us to embrace the word, even as it comes to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Once again, I want to welcome us to our discussion today in the open heavens. And the title is The Word or the World. The word of God or the world. The memory verse is taken from Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 a. Colossians 3 16 a, which reads thus Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, not sparingly, but richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and in hymns and spiritual song. This is an admonition from God directly to us and that we should sing with grace in our hearts to the Lord. The text is taken from 1 John chapter 2 and verse 14 to 17. 1 John chapter 2 from verse 14 to 17, which reads thus. 1 John chapter 2, I read from verse 14. I have written unto you, fathers, 
because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh, and the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the loss thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. This is very, very profound an admonition to us today, particularly considering the trend of things in the world today. Let's look at the passage once again. May the Lord bless us through the reading and the meditation therein in Jesus' name. John the Beloved is saying here, he has written to us, if you are a father, you are an adult. And the reason he is writing this strong exhortation to us is because we have known him. In other words, only those who have known Christ could receive the admonition that follows. Ye have known him, that is from the beginning. So we are addressing those who have known him. But if you have not known him, the opportunity is not lost yet. You can know him today. Then you can understand what the Spirit is saying to the people. He said, I have written to you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abided in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. The wicked one is the devil, and his instrument is sin. Young ones, congratulations, those who have known Christ. If you are a young fellow here listening to us today, you must know Christ. And the word of God must dwell in you. That is what the memory verse is saying. Many young ones are in church today, but they are not abiding in the world. The word of God is not inside of them. That is too dangerous. He said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. He said, I'm writing this strong exhortation to you today because the word of God abided in you. Is it true? And you have overcome the wicked one. Have you overcome the wicked one? Have you overcome sin? Are you living above sin? If you are not living above sin, this word may not have any place in your, in your life and it may not do you any good. But my prayer is that today, today, you will give your life to Christ. The word of God will dwell richly inside of you and then you'll be an overcomer. Now, what is the exhortation about? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If the apostle had stopped here, we would have been in confusion. What is the world? What are the things that are in the world that we must not love? Is it choosing a good career? Is it living in a good house? Is it, is, it, is it riding on a good car? That is not it. Now, let us see what he's talking about. For all that is in the world that he's talking about, the lust of the flesh. Don't indulge your flesh. Do not allow your flesh to take you to where you do not want to go. The loss of the flesh and the loss of the eyes and the pride of life. These are what we are being warned against today. 
the word or the world. Now, if you look critically at this particular uh, verse of the scripture, you will know that it is not just the making of the 21st century. It has been from the beginning of creation. These are the weapons the devil used against our forebears, Adam and Eve. The loss of the flesh, the loss of the eye, and the pride of life. Let's see. I mean, for the purpose of clarification, let us look at Genesis and chapter 3 thereof. Genesis chapter 3. You see something there very, very important for us to understand. Genesis chapter 3, and I read... Uh, let us look at verse 6. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, the loss of the eye, combined with the loss of the flesh, many of us indulge our body with those things that God hates. And a tree that is to be desired to make one wise. Pride of life. The Bible says knowledge pours off. The pride of life. You see many educated ones are so proud. So proud to the point of saying there is no God. They read and read and study and study and they say there is no God. Because they have relied on their knowledge. So you can see that this is a weapon that is a primordial, that is an age-long one. Love nor the world, neither the things are in the world, the loss of the flesh. Do indulge yourself in your libidinal instincts. Many will not allow a day to pass without having sex. <laughs> So, what is, what, is, what, is, what is the implication? If they are adults and married, if their, their wives or their spouses are not around, then they go for extra marital wandering. The loss of the flesh. Many, their belly is their God. They can eat the food of tomorrow, today. The Bible warns us against such because that was what destroyed the destiny of Esau. Esau went into the jungle. He got a very good prey, but he could not wait to dress it for food. He saw a ready-made pottage and he sold his birthright. I pray that you will not sell your birthright in the mighty name of Jesus. The another thing that is very profound in this, this passage is that those three laws are not of the Father, they are of the world, they are of the devil. So that which is not of God the Father, we must abstain from. And verse 17 says, And the world passeth away, and the laws thereof, they cannot stand all these passions. They can't stand. They become obsolete very soon. Why do we allow ourselves to be ruled by the present fashion? We argue it. Is it a sin to do this, to do that? When those fashion are gone, we remain. And only those who are abiding in the word of God will remain. Verse 17 says, and the world passes away, and the Lord thereof. But he that dwells the will of God abideth forever. You want to abide forever? You want to have everlasting life? You must go for the word and not for the world. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Our Father in the Lord says in this devotional reading. People are naturally influenced by what they constantly see or hear. 
Thus, every Christian is at risk of being influenced by the world around them. This is why we must always remember that though we are in the world, we are not of it. John chapter 15 and verse 19. Our major influence should be the word of God. According to Romans chapter 12 verse 12, 2, which says, Romans 12 verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. But the reverse is the case nowadays. We are conforming instead of being transformed by the renewal of our mind, which was the evidence of being born again in the yester years. And the reason is that we may prove what is good, that we may distinguish what is good from what is bad, that we may prove, that we may establish the, what is acceptable to God, what is perfect will of God for our lives. Unfortunately, Christians, so-called, nowadays go for the permissive will, not the perfect will of God. Permissive will. The permissive will that will end them in trouble. Permissive will. In the church of career, permissive will in the church of spouses, permissive will in the church of where to walk, in those days, we were selective. Our forebears were selective. They don't go for anything. They don't fall for anything. They were chosen as to where to walk, where to live. Not for anything, because all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. So that they may not make the shipwreck of their faith. The above passage warns us against being influenced by the world. It counsels that our minds must be constantly renewed so that we can do the will of God which is clearly written in his word. It is very important that we refuse to be influenced by the world. Others may, we should not. How often do you read your Bible? If you don't read your Bible often, how will you be influenced by the word of God? If you don't read your Bible at least in the morning and the evening, it is likely that you are already being influenced by the world. You are bound to be influenced by the world. We are constantly being reminded that we are not of this world. We are just a passerby. This is because something you don't interact with regularly cannot have more influence on you than that which you relate with frequently. If you relate with the word frequently, you'll be influenced by the word, I mean, as, as much as possible. But if you relate with the word of God, you, you, you behave strange even to the world. They will call you names. They will say you are strange. They will say you, are not, you don't belong to this planet. They will say you are old school because the Bible is old. Beloved, if they call you old school, you are on the right track. If they call you modern man, then you have missed it. Because there is no way you can be influenced by the word of God and you will not be called old school. Our father in the Lord said recently that he said he, was, he belonged to old school, that he was a fool. He said his foolishness has paid off. Yes, it is evident across the globe that his foolishness, which he got from the word of God, has paid off. So we ought to be influenced by the Bible. The Bible was written some 2,000 years ago. That is why somebody told me recently that the Bible is no longer adequate to answer moral questions in the 21st century. <laughs> As if the world, the, the heaven St. Paul we live in is not where we are, we are, are striving to go to. Beloved, don't be deceived. You must be old school because the Bible is old. So if you are influenced by the word of God, 
then you you leave you leave like an old school. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. You must ensure that you memorize and meditate on a scripture daily. It will influence you. It will influence you. For example, like uh, Romans 12, 2 we read earlier, and be not conformed to this world, but be tra ye transformed. Then when that one co continue to recall, I must be transformed. I must be transformed. I must be transformed. So when they come around to, to sell bad theology to us, we remember. Many Christians today lie, live like the world around them. They hardly pray before making decisions. Even though Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 says, you should not lean on your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways. They ignore the poor and hungry. Even though Matthew 25, 45 says that, not showing care for the hungry and the destitute translates to not showing care for Christ. If you interact with the word of God, you have a loaf of bread, you can, you, can, you can share it. They walk around with high shoulders because of their leadership position or wealth. Some pastor will not even want to see some members because they have nothing to offer. Some pastor will even reject the widow's might. They will tell you, <laughs> that is not for me. Some pastor will condemn those who bring the so-called tattered notes, forgetting that that may be the last in the post of that fellow. They don't resemble their master who commended the widow, who, who brought the old thing she had. Whereas our master watched the feet of his disciples and even said, whoever will lead among us must be the servant of everyone else. No, we don't serve anymore. Leaders don't serve anymore. What really influences you? This is the question. Is it the word of God or the world? If the word of God has any influence on you, it will show in your lifestyle. You wouldn't need to tell people that you are a Christian before they know that indeed you are a child of God. So, my beloved, the question is still coming. The word or the world? Is it the word of God that is influencing you? Or the world around you? You are being politically correct. <laughs> You may not be theologically, or you may not be biblically correct. If you are politically correct, because the word of God is supreme. So, we have to reflect on this question. What influences your daily decisions? What is it that is influencing your daily decision? Is it the situation around you? Or the infallible word of God, the word that can never change, the word of God settles in heaven forever. Is it the word of God? Is it the world? Shall we pray? Eternal King of glory, we thank you. You sent your word to us powerfully this morning. We stand condemned because we have been carried away by the world. Father, help us to trace our step back to you and to the world. So that we can, by now, from now on, we we'll live by the precepts in the word of God. So that we don't perish with the world. Thank you, everlasting Father. Blessed be your name forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, sir. How many minutes? 24 minutes. 24? 24.